Google planning to relaunch its AI tool that creates images of people in the next few weeks. The tech giant paused the technology after inaccuracies in some historical depictions. Joining us right now to discuss mistakes and bias in AI is Michael Furtick. He's the founder of Heroic Ventures. Good morning to you. Uh, this has caused uh, a lot of consternation, a lot of commotion, uh, frankly, uh, around the country, around the world. Uh, the pendulum swung one way. Is it going to swing the other way? Michael, how big a deal is this? And, and why are these things happening? I, I think it is a big deal that Google, which is the source of truth for any number of topics in our lives, you, your producers, your colleagues rely on Google for information probably hundreds of times a day. It is a big deal that Google, which is now the paper of record for the internet, the way the New York Times might have been one day in the past, the paper of record for the world, is creating fictitious and historically impossible images. For example, depicting the founding fathers as African-American men or Asian women, or refusing to answer or declining to answer who is more evil, Adolf Hitler or Elon Musk. Over time, if left unchecked, this fictitious information that came from Gemini and comes from other models, you don't have to just pick on Google, will find its way into our knowledge sphere, will find its way into schools, will find its way into curriculum and lessons, because teachers will incorporate what they find, right. students will incorporate what they find when they write essays, and then we will further miseducate the younger generations with bad information and bad history. And the things that we think are bad about our current political electorate will get right. only worse. So I think it is so a Michael, very you, You've set the table quite nicely. The real question is, can these things be fixed? And how are they going to be fixed in real time uh, over time? They so can be fixed. we're always getting the most accurate information that actually exists out there. If, in fact, what it's really doing is pulling from all sorts of other places, some of which is going to be accurate and some of which is not. So I like what you just said. There's sort of garbage in, garbage out. That's true. You have to make sure they're pulling from good sources. But there's also what lends these these models, which are inherently dumb. They have to be taught how to think the way any other machine has to be taught how to think. It's the lens that these, these models are given or that's applied to these lenses by the political officers who operate and work and control large bureaucracies that these companies insist on applying. There is a political class, a political officer class, just as there was in the Soviet Union. It is very real. These are unreviewable people and many of them grifters, who are unemployable outside of these very, very specific jobs that they have in choosing the political future and the ideological Hold truth. On. Who are the grifters? And I think you have a group of bureaucrats who work at companies like Google, like Meta, who are in charge of something called ethics or something called political compliance, who are effectively unemployable people, but they have through their PhDs and through their consulting gigs and through their self-appointed roles as political truth seekers or ideological truth seekers become the arbiters of truth for okay, the so outputs of these models. Who should be the arbiter models. of truth? Because the, tr you know, the truth is if, 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 if Google hired Joe Kernan and Andrew Sorkin... We might get somewhere close to it. Well, we might, but at the same time, I'm sure there would be people who would say... You know, that Joe has one view of the universe, and they would say that Andrew has another view of the universe. Michael, I, saw I would take <laughs> I would take a combo of Joe and Andrew every day over that the might kinds work. of people. Thank you, but because we don't have that now, we have ten Andrews <laughs> oh, on most of these. Look, let, on most let, of let me these not sites. let me not no, name check. Let me not hey, name check the guilty. But but, but Michael, when, when I saw some of the recent stuff. Shocking. They, I, I asked myself, shocking. this just looks more like more Gigo. The people putting the garbage in and the AI spits the garbage out. Or. Oh, I think it's worse than that, Joe. It, how do I, they do it? How do they do it? How does AI decide to be as woke as the original people running Twitter? How did it turn out that can way? I, 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 just want to, I don't want to speak over Michael. I just want to say one thing, though. Yeah. What happened, yeah. this, the reason this happened to but, begin with right. was because the truth was two and three years, four years ago, when, if you looked at some of the Google AI originally, it was super biased against minorities, like super biased, like 
white men, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, the if, you, Google AI if you go back and look was at what... Was that Gigo too? How did that happen? That, that was three or four years was ago. Was it Gigo? So, garbage in, garbage out. How did it happen? Arguably, I don't know. Who, but who, I think one of the things that happened was you had this pendulum so swing, so they were trying to correct so they, that. Michael, am I wrong there? I'm not familiar with the history that you're describing, but I would never I characterize you as wrong, Andy, Andrew, under any circumstances. What I can say is that this, whether it's overcorrection or just the innocence and naivete of the model, um, it is pernicious and untrue. And the, the problem is, I'm gonna launch myself into your earlier conversation with the Mooch, whom we know and love. The problem is that the same people who will accuse Donald Trump of making up falsehood and doubling down on falsehood will come to the defense of a faceless, implacable model from a public company that no one really wants to take responsibility for when it comes up with historically inaccurate images. It may be intellectually interesting or stimulating. It may be educationally inspiring to talk about an alternate history. And there may be a lot of reason aesthetically or politically to review the, 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 the failures of history, but these institutions, the reason we're talking about this on CNBC instead of MSNBC is that these ideologies are not just in the political sphere. They have now entered the shareholder universe. They have entered the business right. sphere. And yeah. the political officers that we're talking about, whether they were, right. I don't remember that moment you're referring to, Andrew, on sort of on the right, but yep. now certainly on the left, and no one accused the, the Silicon Valley of being right wing. Oh, no right. one should. Be. The hey, political Michael. officers, are very, very well equipped at getting right. you fired if you have any dissent. Yes, Andrew, sorry. I apologize. We are up against a hard break. We always look forward to seeing you, and we hope to do it again well, very, very I, soon. We're I understand. Come back Next time, we'll continue. Ahead.